Just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Bloke in a Bar. I am here with one of my favourite players in the NRL, Brian Toll. How are you going, brother? Why go on? Uh, why go on? I see. As a white person, I don't know what you just said. Oh, g'day, mate. Oh, is that g'day? <laughs> <laughs> is, where did that, that originated in England? Uh... The, the Wagwan? Wagwan, I think yeah. it's like... Or Caribbean or something like that? Yeah, Somalian or something. Okay, actually, you know yeah. what? I could Google right in front yeah. of me. Let's let's Google that shit right now. <laughs> Where, how do you spell it? Wagwan. W-A-G-W-A-N. W-A-N. Where does a Wagwan come from? Oh, maybe it's Jamaican. Jamaican, yes. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. We learn things on Bloke in a Bar. <laughs> Wagwan means what's going on. So if you're ever in Sydney's West and someone says Wagwan, don't run. They're actually saying, what's happening? Up there, what's happening? What's happening, man? <laughs> how you been, brother? How you enjoying, uh, how you enjoying a premiership off-season? Uh, f- yeah, no, I was pretty full on yeah. um, the first two to three weeks. But mm. then um, obviously just um, spending time with family now so yep. just trying to make the most of it before I go back to pre-season so. what's been a bigger deal do you think oh not, not a bigger deal sorry but because not only did you win a premiership you asked your partner to marry you which I actually said at the time was the most alpha thing I've ever seen in my life you had a cut you, had, you were split I think you had yeah. blood bleeding down you've just won a premiership then you go to your partner your better half I'm assuming and ask her to marry you what Walk us through that moment. How did it come about? Why did you do it? Why was it so great? Um, oh, so I think it started at um, after that win against um, the Storms. Yep. So obviously I had to get through that win to obviously make the grand final win. Um, during that time, um, there was like a lot of emotions going through the, the mind. And then uh, after when we got that win, um, that's when obviously um, just trying to think of a, a good time to you know whether it's a good time or not yep. to propose to the missus so um yeah just trying to not think about it too much at the start of the week or the grand final but mm. um also just trying to you know focus on the game as well yeah for sure and um yeah so after when we got that win fuck it, um it was a uh, yeah it was just it was just you know something that i really needed to do and mm. once you know it, the game was done. I uh, went to go look for Critter's missus. So Critter's missus was the one that had the ring. I was gonna say, where'd you hide the ring, bro? Yeah, everyone was, everyone <laughs> thought I was hiding it in, you know, in between my cheeks or something. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, everyone. that wasn't the first place I thought, but that is an option. Yeah, no, it, it was. That was probably the second <laughs> plan. But, <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, luckily she um she was holding on to it after the game and yep. um yeah. So yeah, I was kind of nervous. Eh? I wasn't really Andrew. too sure what she was gonna say. Um and then yeah, so straight after the game I. Walked straight to her and uh, told her that she's the best thing that's ever happened to me, and then yeah. got down on one knee, yeah, and proposed to her. And, and that uh, means a lot because you literally just won a premiership. And if you say you're the best thing that's ever happened to me after winning a premiership, that's a pretty high bar. Yeah, no, it was, yeah, it was, it was pretty funny because everyone started reposting it, and you yeah. know, all the girls were like saying, you know, business kind of set the bar for like all hundred percent. My so. missus left me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> she literally left me on the spot. She's like, "You're a fucking loser." You, you. <laughs> You, you were at Macca's when you thought it was, you want to get married. So thanks for that. Um, that's why I got in the show so that we could talk about the fact that I lost my part that I care about. <laughs> um, were you like, it's one thing when you prepare, but when it's actually about to happen, were you like, oh shit. Yeah. So like, it was like kind of, you know, trying to make it up in my mind, like yep. fantasizing like it's a movie or something. Yep. But, you know, during the time, it's like, like nervous as a, yep. yeah, it just felt like I had like two grand finals in, in one day. So. Yep um yeah i was i was actually nervous i wasn't really sure what she was you know obviously gonna say and really um yeah the moment when i got down on one knee and asked her the question she you know said yes, yes. So, and it's yeah. like all the things you want to say you're like oh, you know what yeah, i mean like you probably had this full speech in, that <laughs> in your head yeah, was, and then like you got there and you I, I love you heaps and you're the best ever. yeah it was, yeah i dropped my nuts so, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> mate it was it was um fuck, what a special moment what a special moment yeah. um but yeah, I mean, walk us through this year for you. You know, you personally obviously had an incredible year. Had a bit of an injury problem, yeah. on probably what post origin. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I think it was post origin. Yep. And so that year, this year, sorry. Yep. Like, what was the feeling within the team? Was did you, could you feel something special was happening? Was it different to the year before? Was it the same? Like, what was it like for you? Uh, it was, I reckon it was yeah a bit of the same, but just obviously there was a couple of new faces in the crew and yep. um, bouncing off last year 
uh, just really wanted to come through the year kind of with the same attitude, but just probably a bit more yep. aggressive. I think that's what our go to was, and mm. you know, we wanted to be the team that everyone was scared, you know, yep. scared of, and um, yeah, like towards the the back end of the season, mm. you know, there was like keeps of games where it was like close as, and yep. you can tell that everyone was like really trying to scrap for that yep. big dub, and yeah, it was just different breed of a team so yeah yeah and so you know as your because like what's crazy is your run to the grand final last year was probably better yeah than your run this year <laughs> which is bizarre when you yeah. think about it you know like if you were looking at a year of like the year that you should win you would have said last year whereas this year had heaps of injuries um close fought losses uh close yeah losses, yeah, losses. Got, you lost your first match of the finals and that what after that first loss or even in that game what was the discussion like? You know, was it were you worried? What did first loss of um, in the, the finals? The finals, yeah, uh, yeah. I think it was a, a moment of like kind of resetting of what our you know our goal was. And, yeah. Um, yeah. After that game, uh, it was against the bunnies, and mm. you know when we obviously lost against you know the bunnies, it was it was pretty tough because mm. obviously you know it's finals and you know it's it's all down to. It's a, it was a do or die. That's yep. what it came down to. So, it's either we want it or we don't want it, and mm. it just kind of fit like the drive of you know where we're obviously heading. And yep. um, yeah, yeah, that was the go to for it. And so you, you that final series, like every game for you guys was close. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it was like every game was do or die. <laughs> like you lost the Rabbitohs, then was it the Eels where it was like tight as anything? Yeah, Could have gone either way. Yeah. And then obviously you get into the finals. No, sorry, yeah, the the finals, and it's another extremely finals, tight game. Yeah. What do you remember from the the grand final? The build up or anything in the game? Um, yeah, probably the build up. Hey, eh? mm. you know, it started from so the Eels game. So the game after Bunnies when we lost in the finals. Yeah. Um, I was on the sideline, mm. and that was that was probably like the most nerve wracking you know, feeling yeah. that I could obviously comprehend and yep. like just being on the edge of my seat just watching and like mm. it was just so close and um yeah it was just you know it was a good game but it was also tight as well you know yep. it could have went either way yep. like you said and um also in melbourne you know that was a tight game it was, yep. a, it was a, probably the my favorite game because just so uh, it was just like so tight and yeah yeah probably just the lead up to the grand final and then obviously the icing on the cake yeah and so the melbourne game um was it did you just talk about the year before what had happened and how you you know you had that grand final rematch or was it just like not nah, new year we just need to get the job done yeah i think it, so yeah our mindset was just to you know obviously what happened last year just yeah. leave it in 2020 and yep. focus at the task at hand of this year which is to win the grand final obviously mm. and um you know whether we versus the same team again like melbourne you yep. know, just get the job done and obviously play together as a team and get that win so we can continue on with our our journey to the top. And so you get to the grand final. What's the nerves like? You know, are you nervous? Are you worried? Are you confident? What's it like? Uh, I think, it was, uh, for me personally, I yep. think I was just mainly excited, eh? Yeah. So, like, half of me was grand final and then half of me was proposing to the miss. <laughs> yep, yep. So, but I was, yeah, I was mostly trying to focus on the GF, but, mm. no, nah, yeah, the atmosphere of, you know, all the fans crying and... Yep. Um, nah, I think it was just... It was such a good game as well, you know. It was very intense at the start as oh, well. Man, you know, it was wild. Yeah, it was just going back and forth. Yeah, and um, no, yeah, it was just such a tight game, obviously. Mm. So, yeah. And so, were you were you outside Crito or were you on the other side at the start of the year? No, no so oh yeah, so Crito was on the <coughs> wing actually. So he ended on the wing. Yeah. When Crito took that intercept, so because you would have been there, so what yeah. were you thinking? I was I was dying in the ass. So like I was, <laughs> so so my lungs were pumping. Yeah. And you know I was obviously. Puffed out. To like be fair, that. you did run like 280 meters or something like that. So uh, you've got an excuse to be oh tired. Yeah, I was like ultra puffed as, and yeah, w once I seen Critter, um, I was already celebrating. Yeah, you know, I was just like so excited and overwhelmed because, mm. um, yeah, I was just saying in my head, just keep running your big draft. But, <laughs> yeah. Prove those long legs, bro. Yeah, he's long, tall. <laughs> like, he's got everything. Like yeah, he's say, a yeah. gun. He's a gun. Um, okay, so is there any moment that you remember specifically when you knew you'd won the grand final? Uh, <laughs> probably when Crito got the intercept. Yeah, but then uh, kind of held off a little bit when they scored. And yeah, um, no, nah, I think uh, when was it? Two 
was it? So after when Johnson scored in the corner, mm. um, that, I think that's when all the boys, that's probably the loudest I've ever heard the boys talk on the field. Oh, really? Yeah, really? everyone just started routing up and yep. just started backing each other. And, you know, their chat was just, you know, it, like, it was just so loud. Yeah. So like the boys behind the try line, everyone was saying, we're not letting this go, boys. We're not letting this go. So yeah, behind the trial line, you know, um, I think it was up your Klez. Up your Klez just brought everyone together and just said, just one more effort, one last effort. Yep. You know, all we have is just one last effort. And yep. you know, as soon as we went off to the kickoff, and that's when all, I can just feel like all the boys' energy and everyone was just turned on and ready yep. to go. It's um, it's something about when you when you've got a team that is going really well. There's like an un. You can't describe it, but everyone's just on board. You know what I mean? And like some, like you would have been like 2019. You guys didn't play the best, so you know what it's like to have a team that is just doesn't feel right. Yeah. But sometimes it just feels right. Did you just have that feeling in that grand final? Like we're going to get the job done. Yeah. You? Like you can just kind of feel like everyone's doing their job. Yeah. Like you don't really like have to ask or yeah. kind of you know, but yeah, you could just feel the energy from everyone that everyone was you know ready to do their obviously their job yep. to the best of their ability so yeah and so the siren goes you are a grand final winner in the nrl in your third season of nrl uh what's that feeling like Frick. yeah I, I don't know i was um i was speechless um at mm. first i just started screaming my heart stopped for like a good two seconds yeah and you know just um yeah just everything uh, throughout the year just to build up to and yep. you know, get into where we were um on that day it was just phew, so good eh? it was, crazy it was just crazy. so crazy yeah everyone just crying out to each other and mm. um, just celebrating and it's the, the the beautiful thing about your win is like it you came so close last year and then to come again it's it's so tough to back that up you know yeah. and you could tell by you guys because like last year you had no injury <laughs> problems everyone was sweet Whereas this year, you guys had a bunch of injuries, like people breaking down. So it's, it's uh, yeah, it was so incredible for you to turn around. What was the, you know, what did Ivan say to you guys after the, you know, when you got in the change room? Did they say anything or did you just get straight to celebrating? No, I think, I think Coach was just talking about how proud he was, um, mm. not just with the players, but also um, the boys that obviously that didn't mm. play and also the staff that contributed and mm. just everyone making the sacrifice to get where uh, we were on that day. and. Um, you know, bouncing off last year, you know, how we lost the grand final and, yep. you know, not many teams can obviously make it to the grand final. Absolutely. Lose, come back again next year and, you know, win it. And um, I think Coach uh, just merely just said that we made it, we made it to the top and yep. um, let's celebrate. Boom. Yeah, let's go. Straight into it. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like, the celebrations? Was it everything you ever dreamed of? Yeah, it was just, yeah, it didn't really sink in that we won. Uh, probably I well, didn't sink into me till like the second week. Yeah. Yeah. So two weeks later, it just sun- kind of sunk in that. Yep. Bro, won the grand final. Sick man, so good. Um, okay, so take us back to a, a young Biza. Um, <laughs> you're obviously Samoan t- Samoan heritage. Yeah. Samoan heritage. Also Chinese descent. Interesting little tidbit that you wouldn't know is uh, my granddad's actually Chinese. So we are basically brothers, as you can tell. See. Yeah, we're brothers. We're brothers, baby. <laughs> we're brothers. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but anyway, uh, Sam Old and Chinese uh, descent. Grew up in uh, Mount Jordan. Yep. Educated at Rudy Hill High School. Now, what was growing up like for you? I think, uh, you know, obviously, you know, we see the, you guys have, your area has just taken the, the, the country by storm. You know, it's, it's, it's so interesting to see because an area that had been, so i guess like laughed at for so long is now being celebrated you know the culture that you guys have brought yep. to the forefront um what's it like to have, to be from that area you know like it's as i said like it's an area where you guys have struggled for you know people struggle in that area yep. but now it's an area where people talk about like the heads of culture in australia really yeah no it's it's um no it's just mad how everyone like comes together in one community and just contributes in you know however like they may please like um you know a couple of boys that are you know obviously young and like they're they're playing out of their their own areas and stuff like that it's like even if they don't play nrl you know Mm. boys are still you know proud of you know where they come from and yeah um it's just it feels so good to be you know one of those people that um from the fta that everyone looks at not only myself credit spencer and 
you know, Romy, a few of the the young boys that are coming up, like Taylor mm. May and um, Isaac Tega and yep. Tito Taruva, you know, they're a couple of the boys from the FTA as well. And, um, nah, yeah, so just kind of like leading that little um, road for, you know, all the youngsters that come through. It's, um, yep. nah, it's pretty cool that everyone contributes in one, you know, community and, you know, everyone's just so proud of, you know, where they come from. Because yep. back then, they, you know, we didn't... 100%. Yeah. Back then, yeah. You know, you like young kids coming from that area. You know, the the kids from the richer area would put shit on them, be like, "Oh, you're from." You know what I mean? That's just yeah. the way it is. Yeah. Whereas now, the kids from the rich area are playing your music, <laughs> talking the way you're talking, yeah. and using the forefront of culture. And it, I just think it's, I think it's a fucking awesome. And I also think that like with the new wave of music, only people that spoke differently walk differently talk differently could bring such a cool different culture and feel to it you know what i mean yeah um and that's what's so good about multiculturalism because you get different things come together and it creates what you guys have created out in the area there so yeah what was it i guess i guess what was it like for you going up because this was before you know this is before all that yeah last uh, so um yeah me growing up uh yeah my, my parents actually kept me grounded eh? yeah. i was like the goody goody boy so oh really yeah i, I didn't really you know, party too much, mm. you know, not many girls. Um, yeah, I was always at home. It was yep. either stay home, do the chores, um, mm. you know, train as well, get to where you want to be, mm. or go out, party, come home, cobble hiding. So, <laughs> yeah, rather, rather go chase <laughs> that dream. So, yeah. Well, uh, not take the hiding, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and so do you think it was, you know, um, are your parents, like, deeply into their faith as well? Did that, did that kind of keep you on the straight and narrow, or did you find that later on in life? Uh, I kind of found that on later in life. So yeah. uh, my parents were, you know, obviously they're Christians and mm. um, you know, they're, you know, really faith. Um, their faith is like really high up in um, in the ministry as well. So, yep. uh, you know, their, their teachings were obviously brought down to myself and my siblings. And, yeah. uh, you know, at a certain age, you know, it would just click, you know, everyone would be like, like you would get to a certain stage and you would be like, you know, I want to start, you know, focusing on my faith. Where yep. I was at a young age, where I was just like, oh, I have to get yeah. up for church, and yep. I have to wake up early. Got yep. to do this. Got to read that. Yep. Um. But yeah, so uh, yeah, it, it didn't click on till maybe I was like, probably after high school. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So do you think it was more footy that kept you on the straight and narrow? Because it's very like, like I'm not from, you know, a tough area at all, but. The amount of times where my mates would go out, yep. um, or a few mates that I had, maybe one or two of them, <laughs> <laughs> but the times when the, the grade would go out, you know, like your school, everyone yep. at school would all go out, and I would be like so cut because I'd be at home, yeah. and I at the next day I had to be ready for footy, and there'd be some people, oh, not footy, sorry, soccer, there'd be some people that would like go out and still play soccer, and I'd be jealous of them, but my parents would be like, nah, there's no chance, like you've got soccer the next yeah. day or whatever. Was it similar for yourself? Yeah, I was like, I had to make so many sacrifices. So every time I would come back from like, like come back to school mm. and people would be talking about, you know, party this, yeah. party that, freak, this was mad. And yeah. I was just be in the corner just eating my lunch. And yeah. Yo, that's mad. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Thanks, bro. <laughs> Why don't you speak louder about how sick the weekend yeah, no, was? Freak, yeah, no, it was, it was always like that. You know, my mom and dad always kept me grounded yep. um, just to make sure that it was, you know, I wasn't yep. getting into trouble or anything. So, yeah. And so obviously... Um, the music scene from you know there's so many people from your area yep. that have like just just world famous now yeah, yeah. not even just australia but they've also put australia on the map yeah um did was was music always a big thing within your community or was it uh, something that came out of nowhere yeah or? no so like yeah it was it wasn't like anything b until like drill, like when yep. the drill music come, started coming out from the one four boys. So, yep. um, yeah, so it wasn't really too big like back in the days, mm. like when I was obviously still in school. But then yeah. it started picking out. It was after school. That's mm. when the boys started coming through. I knew I grew up with um yeah a couple of the one four boys. Uh, probably yeah three of them mm. or two. Yeah, two of the artists. Yeah, I went primary school with them. I remember when I first heard that, and I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And because it was so new, I just, and like, I like hip hop, like the old school hip hop. Yeah. And so like I grew up, like my first CD ever bought was like Tupac, uh, Greatest Hits. And when I first heard it, I was like, what the fuck is this? But then like, I played it again. Yeah, and started. I played it again. <laughs> and then before I knew it, I was like, I'm a fucking fan. This is mad. Yeah. This is hectic. Um, 
And I just, it's so impressive. And the risk that those boys took to just say, like, because it was a whole new sound. Like, yeah. it, it had not been heard in Australia before. Obviously, mm -hmm. over in England, they had, you know, the drill scene there. But, uh, like, drill beats with Aussies on it just yeah. never, ever have been done before. Yes. And I'm sure the haters they would have had would have been crazy. Yeah, it, it was funny because, like, at the start, it was, like, one of those, like, oh, who are these guys? Who do they think they are? 100%. And then look at them now. Like, they're, yep. they're going everywhere making, you know, covers with, you know, big names in, crazy. like, UKs and stuff like that. So. Yeah. No, yeah, they're killing it, the one football. And it's yeah. just the the impact that they've had on Australian society is yeah. just like will never be the same. It sounds yeah. dramatic, but we truly as a as a culture will never be the same. Like mm. music culture, anything. They are like worldwide. So yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a massive fan of all those boys um and what they achieve. So for you personally, like did you was growing up was it like you play footy or you do that or was it you know what i mean like you, yeah. what was the kind of way out for uh, you oh for like for for myself right so my my old man was um he was training my brothers so my brothers were footy players as well and mm. uh, i was just one of those like you know those you know, average islander families where um you know where if your brothers are playing footy you know you have to play footy Absolutely, as well yeah. and yep. Uh, for me, yeah, it was just like one of those like, oh, uh, I'm playing footy because, you know, I have to play footy. And yep. um, I think when I started reaching an age where I think it was like under 10s, that's when I started actually enjoying it and, yep. you know, kind of, you know, starting to get that feel where I'm like, oh, I feel I feel like I'm good at this, so mm. I'm just going to keep playing it. And yep. I think it didn't start till when my little sister passed away, that's when I started, you know, actually started Know, setting goals where yep. I wanted to be, like in footy and stuff like that. So yeah. And so you know you can talk about this as little or as much as you like, but obviously your little sister passes yep. away. Um, how old were you when that happened? I was ten, I think. You were ten when that happened, and, and how old was she when that happened? She was about eight, eight or seven. Yeah, seven. And so I mean, what's that like for you as a young man, just trying to you know young boy really trying to find yourself? Was that <laughs> tough? Like obviously it was tough, but. Walk us through it. Yeah, it was just tough because, um, like, I was I was with my mum when it happened, obviously, mm. and uh, my all my siblings and my my old man was uh, at church, and uh, it was just a regular you know visit just to go see my little sister with my mum, and mm. I was you know, majority of that time the whole time in from the morning till like other ish when we were there, I was just on my uh, Nintendo just playing the game and stuff like that, and then. Mm. Uh, when my mom came in uh, into a room because they took her out somewhere. And and so you're in hospital at this? Yeah, so we went to the hospital, mm. uh, went into uh, her ward and uh, her bed wasn't there. Mm. So the doctors and that said that they're running some procedures or something like that and I was just staying in the room by myself while my mom went to go find her and then mom came back, you know, she was crying and then uh, she was just telling me that, you know, Danielle's not going to make it. That was just the first thing that she said. and. Yep. I just kept asking her, like, what, what do you mean? Like, yeah. you know, what do you mean she's not going to make it? And then, you know, she fully explained it. And then I was just, yeah, yeah it, was, it was a tough bullet to swallow, you know. It was, oh, yeah, yeah, right. it was pretty full on. And so th you said that that's when you kind of started to set goals and focus. Yeah. Was that, did she have a lot to do with that or, you know, how had that come? Yeah, so before her passing um, from, from, I think, 10 maybe 12 down or maybe nah, 10 down. I was just like playing footy like every week, just, you know, just for the fun of it. But then, you know, after when she passed, it kind of gave me that, that little drive and motivation to be like, I want to, I want to do something with this, you know, yep. I wanna do something for her. I want to make somewhere in footy. And mm. um, I was talking to my brothers about it. And then they were just saying, bro, if you want to go big, make an RL. Yep. Yeah. Making our own, do it for her, do it yep. for mum and dad, you know, give mm. something back for them. And um, yeah, so from 10 to here I am, like now, yeah. that's what I've always been you know, doing. Making wow. Yeah. Wow. And so those first few years, I mean, or even, you know, the first, <coughs> what did you try to tell? Like, because I'm sure there would have been games at that age where yeah. you rock up and you don't, you don't want to play. You don't feel like playing or you just want to give it up or I'm, I'm not sure if you want to give it up but you know what I mean you would have had de very down days when you probably missed her or what did you kind of do to get through that um so there was there were games where I was feeling you know a bit down because obviously I missed her and mm. you know it's just killing me on the inside but I was like a bit of that was a bit sad but then at the same time it's kind of like fueling the fire where yep. I was just like you know what I want to do this for her. you know don't be like 
yeah, don't be soft on it. You know, yeah. just be strong for her and mm. um, just try and punch through and you know, get through that game. And that's mm. what I did. I prayed on it. That's when I started praying. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's when my little faith started creeping through a little yep. bit, little you know, moments and here and you there. You saw the power of it for you, how it yeah. helped you. Yeah. Um, man, that's absolutely incredible that you were able to pull through that. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um, so you're 10 years old or, you know, you're 10, 11, 12. Did you begin to make any of the rep sides or anything? Uh, no, really. <laughs> 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 nah, so I was just playing, you know, footy, club yep. footy, um, just every year, just keep working through. And um, there were times where I wanted to, you know, I felt like I wasn't going anywhere. So I was just yeah. like, oh, should I rest this year? And then I was like, no, nah, I don't want to, I can play. Yep. So, you know, that kept me going. Obviously, mm. you know, there was times where I wanted to give up, and my little, my little sister was just that little. That little clicker in the back, you know, just yep. telling me to keep going forward. So, yeah. And so, when did you? When did it become apparent to you that, like, wow, I'm I'm actually better than you know most kids of my age? Um, or did you get offered a contract by Penrith? Or when did it occur to you? Uh, so, in Harold Matts, I don't know what age group that is. What age, what's the age group for? Sixteens. So under sixteens mm. um, for Harold Matts. Um, so I had a trial for them mm. and. Uh, you know, going through all the little trainings and little trial games and stuff, and I felt I felt like I actually did pretty good. Mm. Like, like um, I felt like I did enough to, yeah, um, obviously be noticed by the coaches. But then, so when they told us that they were going to give us a call later on the last day of training, I think, mm. um, for the trials and for the train on squad as well, and uh, I was at home with my family and I was just waiting by the phone, and then when I got the call. I put on a loudspeaker for everyone to hear. <laughs> I put on a loudspeaker for everyone to hear. I was so excited. And then all I hear from is, hey, Brian, uh, unfortunately, you didn't make the team. <laughs> so I kind of, so this is me just holding the phone. I was just like, okay. Yeah, so it was just, you know, yeah, it was just, yeah, it just kept digging the hole, just saying like, yeah, mate, it's just not really fit for, you know, the position. And yep. you know, I didn't, um, <laughs> hopefully you can try next year or something like that. And then I was like, yeah, okay. I was just being, I was, I was that dull. I was just yeah. like, yeah, okay, okay, okay yeah. yeah, all right. He's like, all right, Brian, you take it. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, as soon as that, that was done, I hung up the phone, went straight to my room. Oh, started bawling my eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. my god. Yeah, I think, I think my siblings were laughing at me a little bit, but like, I guess, oh, um, <laughs> like back then, I wouldn't, yeah, uh, back then I wouldn't understand, but obviously now I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, and then that's when I think that's when my brother cracked down on like. This is probably my first ever setback that I've had. And yeah. Um, this is like, this is what's going to happen in your life and stuff like that. And yep. yeah, my older brother was just feeding me, you know, to don't give up. Yeah. So your brother, he, he identified that this was a moment where you needed a bit of support, but also like maybe tough love. Like, you yeah, know, you can't love. just give, you can't give up now. What do you, like, what's the point of that kind of thing? Yeah. So my, yeah, my, my old man, especially, you know, mm. he always, he's always been giving me tough love and um, it's, it's like something that I really needed, mm. you know, for me to, you know, obviously keep pushing through. So absolutely. So yeah, after that call, yeah, I was, <laughs> wow. I was crying. Wow. I was uh, oh. <laughs> like back then yeah. I wouldn't know, but like now I'm just like, fuck, I'm dumb, man. <laughs> <laughs> like but you think you're like, yeah, I've made it. I'm gonna put it on speaker. Like your expectation is like you're yeah. in, and everyone jumps up and yeah, yeah that's really. what I was expecting. Yeah, <laughs> just watching those NFL, you know, when they get those, <laughs> those NFL videos where they get the call. <laughs> Yeah. Oh fuck! That's but yeah, good. didn't get through. But um, SG Wall. That's when. Yep. I think that's when it really kicked off, and yeah, okay. Uh, that's when I actually knew, you know, uh, I belong in this team, and that's when I actually got selected. So yep. Yeah. And so, were you always a winger? Uh, I started off playing center. Oh, okay. But yeah. So that was that was that was funny, eh? Was, yeah. So my winger, Manasse. Yeah. Um, do you know Manasse? Yeah, what you know Manasse. Yeah. The Fainu. hooker. Yeah. He was a winger. He was a winger. And Hamole. Uh, Ola Kawata. Yeah, yeah. He was a winger too. He was a winger. Bruh. So he was on the other side as well. He's too big to be a winger. Know, Holy that's a, that's shit. That's what I'm saying. It was, it was so funny to see him now. Holy, yeah. he's a beast, bro. So, yeah, I was like, yeah, I was playing center at a young age yep. with Manasi. He was my winger. Yep. And he was way taller than me. I was playing center. Wow. So, yeah. I think, didn't his younger brother just sign a big contract with yeah. Manly or something? 
That's so awesome to see. Awesome yeah. to see. Nice to see. Yeah. Um, okay, so when did so you make uh, SG Ball side? Did you say? Yeah, I made that. And who Ball who side. else was in that SG Ball side? Oh, uh, it was like me, Sean Sullivan. Uh, I'm trying to remember, Rick. There was a no. There was there was heaps of like. Was Critter there, or he would have been? No, young, no, he was, oh, he's, he's younger. younger. Yeah, he's younger. Like Critter was younger. Yeah. Yeah. He's he just looks older. You know what I mean? He doesn't look like he's twenty years old. I yeah, know. I wish I had his height. <laughs> oh, bruh. <laughs> um okay so at, you get the sg ball side did multiple clubs come you know knocking or was it just penrith that was like we yeah watching? it was mainly just penrith mm. um so yeah yeah no other clubs kind of really hit me up so it was yep. just mainly uh penrith so yep. yeah that's where i was and so at. penrith offer you when did they offer you a like a full-time contract to go train with first grade uh i think it was after probably Second year, 20s. Okay, so you played two full years of 20s. Yeah, played Did you two. just win at all or come close in the 20s? <laughs> so on my, on my last year of my last year of 20s, I think I was playing, I think I played about four or three cup games. Yeah. And, well, oh, this is funny as, so we versed, <laughs> so my last year of 20s, right, mm. um, we versed uh, Cronulla Sharks in the grand final. Yep. And on that same year, the cup was versing Newtown. I think that's yep. yeah. Yeah, you tend to cup side. Yeah, yeah. for two um, sharks. Yeah, for sharks. Yeah. So the first week I played grand final for, uh, against Cronulla for twenties. Yep. we lost. <laughs> yeah. Come next week, they needed a, a winger or a center, so I played for a cup in the grand final. We lost. <laughs> so <laughs> so sharks tear you up twice. Yeah, so twice. Yeah. <laughs> so that's two weeks lost the grand final. So yeah, you might be the only bloke ever that's <laughs> watched two grand finals <laughs> yeah, in two weeks time. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Oh yeah. shit, man! Um, yeah, I feel stink. I feel like I, I lost the full. <laughs> you lost the game, bro. No, nah, no, nah, I, was, I oh. just felt like a. Oh yeah, you felt like a bad, bad luck. luck. Yeah. Oh shit, man. Yeah. Talk about being down in the dumps, like two grand final losses in a fucking row. Yeah. Um, do you remember anything from those games at all? Um, probably I got whacked by um, like my first first game of cup was against Mounties and Josh um Papali was um. Playing resis, yeah, he was playing Holy resis shit. at that time. So he, he was waxed playing. you, yeah. Oh, he waxed me, man. <laughs> it felt mad, but because it's him, yeah. So he waxed me. I felt like uh, whispering, like, "Oh, big fan." Big fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mate, he's a beast. That, that was probably something I remember. remember yeah. yeah. Oh man, I, I remember playing like Q Cup and that. Like you see the like NRL player across from you, yeah. and you'd just be like in awe. You'd be like, "Oh shit!" Like yeah, just, he's fucking so big and strong and that. <laughs> um, okay, so. What, so so the second year of 20s, they, one, yeah, they asked you to come train first grade. Yep. Do you remember any of your first sessions and, and rocking up or anything like that? Uh, yeah, um, probably first, oh, maybe the second session mm. where I was gone, eh? like yeah. the, the, the training is way different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just a lot of expectations and mm. uh, especially... You know, from the from the um, from the old boys uh, like yeah. Tim Grant and that, mm. you know, just a lot of pressure and stuff like that. So mm. yeah, just a lot of expectations. You know, you can see the difference between absolutely you know, 20s training, cups training, and in you know, a first grade. So and they like because you've got they put a heart rate monitor on you. Yeah. So even if you're making times, if they can see that your heart rate isn't up, they'll make it harder for you. So that no matter what, doesn't matter how you you, you could try to cheat the system, hide, not go as hard. They always know whether you're having a crack or yeah. not having a crack. And they always keep you at every day is yeah. as hard as you can go. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of people, a lot of people may not um, understand that with the training. They might think if you're really fit, oh, then it should be easy for you. But if you're really fit, they just make shit harder for you yeah, until true. you're constantly like the guy yeah, that's rate, eh? exactly like, like the guy that's coming last has the same heart rate as the guy coming first. Like it's that's how hard they train you. Yeah. Um, OK, so the first year that would have been 2018. 2019 19 i think yeah 19. okay so 19 so the first year you start training with them you make your do you remember getting called up to make your debut was it expected was it out of blue or yeah no nah, it was um uh i think it was magic round so this is residence so after when i played residence yep. the week on i think it was on that same week that's when penrith were versing um tigers and magic round yep and the week after so it got through I came back from residence. Mm. Um, uh, the boys were training still, but obviously because I played 
residence you know had a little session to just like recover and stuff like that yep and then i think it was after that day um i went into the kitchen just to grab uh, a cup of water or something before i went home and uh, ivan came in the kitchen and he, he came in you know he usually you know he usually doesn't come through like around the academy only if he's outside training and stuff like that yep. and, you know he came in to ask me you know what, what was i doing on the weekend mm. and i said oh nothing and he's like oh okay I'll, I'll call you today then yeah, and I was like, "Oh yeah, sweet." So, mum came. Mum came and picked me up. We were like halfway down the road. Then he calls me, mm. you know. And then, um, yeah, then he calls me and just jumps straight to it. And he goes, um, "Yeah, so you know, how how are you?" I was like, "Yeah, I'm good, Ivan. Um, I saw you like what five minutes ago." <laughs> yeah, I'm good as well. Yeah. <laughs> and then, oh uh, yeah, he just went straight into it and said, "Yeah, so uh, you're gonna be making your debut um, this week against the Warriors." Did you have that call on speaker? Yeah, I had, nah, so so when that when he said that it was like right in front of the stadium. I told mom to pull over, pull over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like she was panicking as well. She's like, "Wow, what is it?" Because I was crying. I was bawling yep. my eyes out. Yeah. And she was like, "Wow, what is it?" And I was like, "Pull over, pull over." And then that's when I threw it on loudspeaker, and she's yeah. saying like, "You know, you've been you know obviously working you know, really hard to get where you are today, and yeah, um, yeah, you know, you've earned this opportunity, obviously oh, yeah, with your oh, yeah, debut." That's... So yeah, mom was crazy happy yeah she was, yeah well she was there for the first speaker phone call yeah <laughs> she was like man remember the last time you did that yeah, shit? I know. <laughs> yeah my brothers keep bringing that up as well so yeah um okay and i and i mean obviously you know you finally achieve your dream that I, i'm assuming you promised yourself you know with your sister yeah. passing Is that was that something that first came to your mind of like you know you'd done it for her kind of thing yeah it was um yeah, it was a moment of just like like a massive relief of you know ten years in the making of trying to get to um, chase this dream of making the NRL and yeah. you know yeah to be standing there I was just like you know I was telling my my whole family you know we made it you know, not just me like we all you know yeah. put in the work to make mm. the sacrifices to get where I am today and yeah yeah it was um, such a massive relief and so what do you you played the New Zealand Warriors <coughs> what do you remember from the game uh, probably yeah just the build up just trying not to get in. Get get myself caught in the hype. Obviously, mm. you know, everyone's expecting me to perform, and mm. um, yeah, I was just really nervous and excited at the same time. Yeah, uh, running off, running out of the out on the field. Um, you know, just seeing all the banners and you know, feeling the crowd's atmosphere it was it was really something special. And um, probably the one, probably the one thing I remember was um, taking my first carry. Yeah, it dropped the ball. <laughs> Oh yeah, shit. I dro- yeah! I dropped the ball. In the oh first go. my god, that's a nightmare! Yeah, was, a nightmare. How would like, you drop it? I don't know. It just slipped out. I was, I was just <laughs> so telling, was it like just bad hands? Nah, was so it a tackle? So, I, so I, yeah, it was in the tackle. So yeah. I, obviously, I caught it, ran the ball. Yeah. Then when I went to play it, it came out. Then I was like, oh, "These guys <laughs> oh, are gonna no. get into me." <laughs> yeah. And what did you just tell yourself? Look, I just got to brush that off because if I sit here worrying about it, I'm going to play poorly. Or no, nah, first thing I thought was like, oh, freak. But I was I like, bummed out about it. But I was like, no, yeah. I want the I want the next carry somewhere. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay, so you end up scoring your first try round fourteen. Do you, so you stay in the side or do you come back into it? Uh, as in like staying. You make your debut and then did you stay for the rest of the year because you played fifteen games that year. Or did you make your debut and then miss a couple and then come back in the Yeah, side? no, no. I think I stayed. Yeah, okay. I ended up staying through. So Okay, so play uh fifteen games. Mm-hmm. Um and do you remember your first try uh, against the South Sydney ANZ in the nineteen eighteen victory? So it was a close game as well. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Um so Yeah, it was a nineteen eighteen yeah, I remember that game. Uh I think I scored the try to kinda like even that up. Oh really? Yeah, so that was so I was off, you know, off Dill Edwards, you know, he's yep. um, freaky, you know, offloads and mm. um, yeah, just did a little quick hands for me on the side. All I had to do was just put it on the ground, obviously. Yep. You know, and, <laughs> and then that's when I did my Mountie Bop. That was like my first. Was that your first? The, yeah, that was wow. my, my first try. was the first time I popped that. The that's Bop. sick, bro. That's and so sick. Yeah, that was that. That went like massive. Hundred yeah. percent, bro. That was everywhere, and people still watch it now. Yeah, I know, freak everyone. Um, man, that is that is sick. That is so cool. Uh, <laughs> The guts as well. First try to do it. The boys spray or not? Uh, no, the boys, yeah. No, they the loved boys it? are loving it. Yeah, they're like, hey, look, no one ever does that. 100%. So that, that's good that you did it. I was like, 100%. Oh, yeah, I was just, yeah, first thing. Well, I, I always talk about, like, I love the new energy that you guys have brought into the NRL. It's, yeah. it's a different vibe. Um, 
and it's you know it, it adds to rugby league it adds to rugby league if yeah. we're all the same what's the fuck it's boring like yeah. you guys are different to the storm storm are different to roosters roosters are different to the raiders you know what i mean it, yeah. it's a different vibe I, I love it i think it adds excitement to the game yeah true um so yeah so you guys you guys missed the finals though that year um now 2020 rolls around and like this is just such a good year for you such a good year um you, you i felt like when you first came into the grade like i i feel and i correct me if i'm wrong but you've like continually developed your game where you make it a point now to make you know 250 meters 280 meters yeah. or whatever whereas when you first came into the grade and again it could be wrong but i i don't know were you doing as many carries as you do now kind of thing or yeah no nah, so so yeah coming into first grade it was obviously like you said like i wasn't like confident to, to yeah, really wasn't really too confident to yeah. um to go looking for the ball but as of you no know, last year mm. i was you know setting goals to um try and hit you know 150 plus meters yep um like every game because obviously i wasn't you know because i was hungry for the ball i wanted to run that ball and yeah for sure um i always put my hand up if you know if someone needs me to run the ball i always put my hand up and yep. um yeah that's probably something that added to my game mm. just to always um now, if I'm not scoring tries, then you know, get the stats up. Mm. If the stats are not up, then yep. score tries. But and so that 2020 season, like, you just go on this crazy row. Actually, sorry, we'll, we'll go. We'll speak first about um, 2019. You get selected to play for Samoa. Yep. What was that like for? You? Was that no, a was, buzz? Yeah, no, I was buzzing as um, you know, playing in the nines and yep. obviously the game against Fiji. Uh, mm. Just you know, learning a bit more about my culture. Mm. Um, you know, it's just something that really that's really special you know not only representing um myself mm. but also my family's culture as well so it was absolutely yeah, it was definitely um something really special to uh share amongst my families here yeah. mean it's um yeah it's 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 uh that's like one of the big draws of you know guys like yourself that can go back and play for their country yeah. or their heritage is that is learning about some stuff that you may not know because like when you live in australia it's you know, you're, you're, you're caught up in the hustle and bustle of everyday life. You don't really get time to take a step back and go like, I want to hear, I want to know about my family's history yeah. or what it meant to them to do that. And it actually kind of like brings into perspective a lot of sacrifices that your family yeah. has made to be where you are. Um, was there anyone, at, you know, in the Samoa camp that, you know, you really enjoy being around or learned a lot from? Um, everyone, actually, mm. um, you know, everyone was um, so good. It, it kind of had that culture where it feels like um, they've known everyone for like a like a very long time mm. in a short time frame and yep. um probably uh big Joey Leilua. Big yeah. Joey Leilua, the yeah. big boy. Yeah, so he was um yeah, he was so at the start it kind of felt like it was um obviously cuz I was like one of the new boys and the yeah. young boys it was like kind of like hard to try and break the ice and mm. um I think there was like a loof um little function or not not like a little function but uh where we have like a little devotion where we share like a bit of prayer and faith yep. and i think that's when i actually started being myself and mm. after that moment that's when uh, all the boys you know obviously yep. cracked and started being themselves but yeah joey was um someone that was looking after me so mm. kept me kept me under his wing and also big georgie to four big georgie to four yeah um gun absolute gun yeah <laughs> uh, now so 2020, that's when I really feel like your you and especially Romy's character come out. Yep. Was that also a year where did you did you speak about it, or was it more just you felt comfortable to bring the speaker out, be loud, enjoy yourself, kind of thing? Yeah. So obviously 2019, it was like like he he, or he was coming in in and out, yeah. you know, throughout the season. But 2020, that's when obviously he yeah. kind of sealed that little spot. And um, yeah, I think that was a time where we just wanted to. Um, just yeah, bring out our, our, you know, our characters and just to be ourselves and, mm. um, you know, just to kind of be that little image for you know all the young kids in our area to like look up yep. to and, um, you know, it's, you know, it's so cool that you know all the boys, all all the all those young kids out there, you know, they look up to us and yep. uh, we just want to you know obviously be ourselves and mm. just to, you know, make things fun, you know, yep. to show everyone that you know our job is not only you know hardworking and. Um, stuff like that but also fun as well yep. yeah yeah i mean and the energy that you guys bring to a team like 
sometimes when you're feeling a bit down or tired and then you boys rock up with your speakers and you're loud it just like lifts the boys up gives yeah. you gives you the trainings you know more energetic it's it's exciting it's fun so you need you need players yeah, like you yourself and romy yeah. that so 2020 though um that would have been was that your first you know i guess dealings with a you know eight week injury grade three syndesmosis was that the first time you kind of had a longish term injury uh no nah, so in 20 um in 20s i think my first first year yeah my first year of 20s so i played with a syndesmosis oh. on my right ankle damn yeah um Oof. right ankle um yeah there was like yeah i full played the whole game with the right syndesmosis and oh, really? yeah it was just something that kind of it, it, that was annoying but yeah um the left ankle that was mm. the one against the tigers that's yep. when i kind of had that little syndesmosis injury so yeah and that would that was at the st- <coughs> uh, that was uh what round eight yeah so you got back in time to play obviously towards the finals and that mm-hmm. um and this is this is kind of the year where you really find your feet you know you're running for 200 plus meters you're yep. impacting the game was it anything specifically because like as i said like when you come into the grade don't <coughs> get me wrong you played really well but i mean the amount of tackle breaks and that is that something you've always done or is it something that you've slowly brought into your game? Um, probably that's something that I've done like yep. like leading up to um, yeah, first grade and stuff. Mm. Just to, yeah, I don't know. Because I, I, I used to just stand at one spot and just throw off people. Yeah, yeah. But then now I've got that little ability to keep running and do it at the same time, just yep. bouncing off people and... Um, no, oh, yeah, the tackle breaks just yeah, came in. They just come. Yeah. And is it like, like for someone listening, what do you kind of try to do when you're running the ball to do that? Do you, you know, keep your center of gravity low? Like, what, what are you thinking as you're running a ball? If you, yeah, let's say you're about to take a skew, what are you thinking to break all those tackles? Oh, it's funny because I, I, I don't think I've ever, ever taken a scoop before. I've always just like taken it off. <laughs> or right off the yeah, rock then. Oh, one okay. off the rock. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, so I always try and. Um, I don't know. I always try and run. It's it's weird. I always run at the biggest bloke. And really, is that what yeah. you tell yourself? Run at the biggest bloke. No, just run at anyone. Just yep. Whoever's in front, just run. Either run through them or um, run in between. Yep. But um, yeah, I just run that ball. I just run it pump it straight. Or yep. um, I always try and skip out, and then just a late feet mm. back on the inside or yep. late feet on the right, left, and then back on the inside. So yeah, okay. Yeah. So you just go, part of your mindset is like, just find someone, whether it's biggest or smallest, and run as hard as you can at them, and then work from there kind of thing. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Um, and so 2021, actually, so the grand final, you guys go down to Melbourne, 26-20. What, what do you remember from that that grand final, the build-up in the game? Yeah, probably just the the game. Mm. Uh, it was, there was a lot of frustration, uh, especially after the first half. You know, yeah. It was, um, yeah, it was just... Yeah, we're kind of like beating ourselves a little bit, uh, mm. especially at half time. Um, just you know, putting our heads down uh, in the at half time. But you know, we just wanted to uh, obviously lift ourselves in the second half, and we ended up doing it. And yeah, I just remember probably the one thing was you know when the siren went and just yeah, it just kind of broke down. Eh? Yeah, it, it just felt like felt like someone died. Eh? It was just it yeah, was just, it was just really hard to take in. Yep. And um, I think from then, that's when it, that's when I started. Like that's when I started having thoughts. You know, I think I want to be here next year. Yeah, really. Come okay. Do it next year. Um, and so this year rolls around, and you know, you go to another level again. You play this best year of your <coughs> career, but you get selected for Origin. How did that come about? Do you remember the phone call, all that kind of stuff? Yeah. So um, it was on a Sunday. Um, I was. I just remember. Uh, everyone you know saying like oh you're gonna get the call you're gonna get the call but mm. obviously i don't want to get my hopes up and i don't want to pull the phone out and put it on loudspeaker <laughs> or anything like that you wouldn't <laughs> want to do that bro nah, never again <laughs> so um no nah, yeah so uh i was in church and you know my missus kept you know saying you know stay by the phone and mm. i was just like yeah oh, we'll, we'll see we'll see mm. and um there was a moment during uh church where uh I just went to check my phone to see the time. Yep. I was like, oh, okay. Put it down. I hear my phone, like my phone go off. Yeah. I quickly grabbed it, went outside. And I entered it, it was Freddie. Yeah. And, um, yeah, no, 
Yeah, my heart was like full pumping. I was like, yeah. what's up, Freddie? And then he was just like saying like, congrats, man, you made it. And, you know, you got the call and Shit. Yeah, you made the squad. So I was like, well, I was flipping out, eh? Oh, um, man. It was funny, because yes, um, uh, when I came outside, I was on the phone. I was out for like what, a couple of minutes, like five. Yeah. My mom comes out and she's like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. You got in trouble for you. Yeah, I got, yeah, I got in trouble for my mom. My mom was like, yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> I was like, I made the team right. <laughs> and then just the face, she yeah. was like, what are you doing? At? And then when I told her, she's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Completely yeah, changed from angry to change, happy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how good. But yeah, no, yeah What would have you really done strange. if Phil like, had said Wagwan when he, when he picked the phone up? I would have been like, oh, good day, mate. <laughs> <laughs> good day, mate. Oh, fuck, that would be Wagwan to all. Wagwan. Um, <laughs> Okay, so yeah, you make the side, and I mean, what a what a great moment too! You about to go back into church and celebrate that, you know, with the church. Did you did you tell the rest of the church, or nah, not really? You so, kept it private, or so uh, we had a meeting later on that day, so I had mm. to go quickly, go home and you yep. know, pack my stuff, and mm. um, I, I went to the front to the old man's always at the front, and when I went to my old man, tapped him on the shoulder, I got dad, I gotta go, and he's like, what? what? <laughs> you know, he's always doing that, like, hey, what? Where are you going? <laughs> I was like, oh, I made the made the New South Wales team. He's like, oh, God, God. <laughs> yeah, Phil gave me a, a quick kiss and then he said, like, yeah. okay, go, go, go. I was like, okay. <laughs> Both so your parents' like mood just like yeah, changed like change that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, you, you know, you make the side leading into the match. You know, what's it like? It's origin. Like you're leading yeah. into origin. Were you sitting there going, fuck, were you nervous or not nervous? Were you excited? Yeah, was the, it was funny, yes, because there was, there was a moment in the change room where I was just, like, fully getting myself in the zone. And then I was just, like, I full smiled. I was just, like, oh, freak, I'm here. Yeah. You know, it's something that um, me and my missus set a goal on at the start of 20, or oh, this year. Yep. You know, to win the grand final and make origin. Shit. Yeah. So that was something that I was building up to. And, oh, really? um, yeah, I actually didn't think that it would come this quick, like, quickly. Yeah, this quick in my career. And, yeah, to be playing for the Blues, you know, something that you know, everyone watches. It's, yep. It was pretty sick, eh? It was like the, the atmosphere once we ran. I couldn't hear anyone, eh? All yeah. the boys were yelling at me like... I, like, <laughs> I can't yeah, hear. Yeah, I can't hear. Yeah. Um, and so what do you remember from the game? You know, you obviously... You score two tries or one yeah. try? Two tries. Yeah. Now, Romy actually, he brings up uh, that one of his favourite moments is you scoring that try. Yeah. Uh, which is funny because he, you're also an NFL fan. Like he wore an NFL jersey. What, what's the go with that? <laughs> nah, nah, yeah. So me and Rome's always have this thing where, um, <laughs> where, uh, like obviously, you know, if he wears an NFL jersey, like I don't even watch NFL. So <laughs> I just wear it just to piss off Rome. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he always like says that like, I'm always copying him and stuff like that. And then I always tell him. Uh, so you went? Him. Did you go out and get that? Where did you I get it I went from? out and bought this myself. Because you saw he wore it. Yeah, on I the mean, episode before. And he has this. Yeah, on the episode, and also he's got this jersey as well. So I was just like, yeah, I'll get that one. Thank you. So yeah, ended up getting it just to piss him off. For people listening. You walked in and I said, oh, how's your boys Mahomes going? And you were like, I'd have got no idea. Yeah. I just bought it because <laughs> Romy bought it. <laughs> um, okay, so the Origin game, what do you remember from the game? Was it the pace of it? Because you guys, you know, you're a part of a record yeah. win. But what, what was something that you remember from it? Um, yeah, probably just the atmosphere and also um, just the the, intense, the intensity as well. Yep. You know, every um, carry I took, it was just fast as like mm. the game was so fast i was already puffed out in the first 10 minutes and yep. um just watching some of the uh, the the other players as well like just on the field watching mm. them like do their thing like yep. Latrell, turbo yeah turbo just watching him like crazy yeah just watching all those boys you know play it was pretty crazy mm. as and well. you were outside troll yeah bruh he's a beast eh? he's a beast he's eh? ultra beast just another level bro he's yeah. crazy crazy and he's like what he's like 20 24 yeah he's, he's yeah he's young I feel as like he's like 40 something but like, <laughs> are you older than me? <laughs> um okay so yeah when you go over and you score that first try was it Romy that threw you the ball or was uh, it Tarek Tarek no my first try was the troll off the troll yeah okay and the second try was off Tarek yeah off cut a ball yep. okay so the first try when you go over what's that you just scored an origin like you just scored an origin yeah so first thing so once I scored, I got up straight away, and the first person I wanted to see was you know Rome's, and mm. he was the first one there. I was yeah. just, 
Yeah, it was just screaming. You get, you got, have you got that picture? Have you seen the picture? I think like you're you're looking at each other screaming. Yeah, it was just screaming at each yep. other like let's go and frick, yeah, it was crazy. Eh? It was such a mad Sick. feeling, but yeah, so good, bro. I thought I put my foot out, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I put my foot out. <laughs> well, you sold it, bro. You sold it. <laughs> um, and then obviously the second try go over. Are you just thinking this is a dream? Like this is a dream. Yeah, it was crazy. Eh? I was yeah. just like, uh, I. Like scoring one try, you know, that's yeah. mad, but then yep. I ended up scoring my second, which is yeah, pretty hectic. So. Yeah, yeah, pretty hectic. Um, and then you record win. And I think there's a picture as well of you and Romy just like taking a moment. I'm not sure whether you're, you know, having a prayer together or something like that yeah. after the game. What What are you feeling in that moment? Can you remember that moment? Yeah, it was just a lot of emotions of because we obviously were not only you know, close uh, mates, uh, he's my brother, live in the same area, representing our families mm. on a platform that we've both dreamt of, you know, playing on uh, Origin, debut, yep. getting the win, um, everyone's watching, mm. you know, doing everyone proud. And, um, you yeah, know, it was just such a such a mad moment to, um, you know, to do a prayer. Because me and Rome's actually um, started praying together when we were playing in 2019. Okay. So that's when we kind of like started pl- like praying mm. every game after the f- in the middle of the field. Okay. W- whether we win or lose, but yep. um, no, it was it was such a proud moment. Eh? I was mm. I was so proud of him. You know, right. you know, just see where he's at today. Yep. You know, representing his family, his little boy as well. And Man. yeah, it was such a mad moment. Both, I mean, both years absolutely like crazy, very crazy moment. Um. Okay, so you win that first one. And then you um, solidify the series, the second game. Did you you miss game three? Did you did you miss game three? No. Nah, so Rome's Rome's missed game three, yeah. but you got to you know be a part of the team that lifts the trophy. Yeah. What, what's that like? You won your first Origin series. No, nah, I feel I feel mad, eh? Like like to be able to you know hold the shield, mm. make my debut as well. You know, with the the boys that I've met yeah. in like weeks, and it feels like I've known her for a long time. It was. Mm. Yeah, definitely a moment to remember, especially mm. you know my career early in my career as well. Yep. So um, yeah, no, it was it was pretty cool to you know lift up the trophy to um, represent not only my family but also the boys that didn't play as well. So yeah. And um, you know what what do you think you learnt in the camp with you know you got James Tedesco, you yeah. know you like Finucan when he come in, you got Jake Trevojevic. What do what do you think you learnt the most from the camp? Um, probably like. The things off the field, yeah, you know, just the resilience and doing all those little extras and little things, yep. to perfect, you know, my game and stuff like that. So, mm. um, you know, Foxy, Foxy was yeah, probably his no, I loved his no, the process. No, you two together, the no coming from <laughs> fuck, my head would explode. This is too much. Uh, he's he's way he's got way too much energy. He's, yep. he's all day that. Way. <laughs> but, um, nah, yeah, just the vibes from everyone was was so good. Um, just to, um, you know, obviously be chilled you yep. know, throughout the camp but also when it's time to switch on you know everyone's on board and yep. um, yeah mostly off the field eh, all the little things yeah you know, resilience and stuff like that so, absolutely yeah. absolutely okay so later in the year you're, you're named Dally M winger of the year do you yeah again and you're also a massive pest at that <laughs> a massive pest every shot that Nathan Cleary was in you or Appy was doing some fucking which I love. I love that shit. <laughs> was that your sole purpose being there? Is just try and pester Nathan Cleary as much as possible? No, I like so. We, so we were in the room. So everyone was in a massive ass hall yeah. where they were presenting the the yeah. trophies and stuff. And we were in a separate room because we were still in the bubble. And um, Rabbitohs were in their own like little cottage. Yeah. Um, and we could. They had two uh, big screens where we could see in the camera. So if I pull my head back, like I could full see it. But it was like kind of delayed. So when I yeah. pull my head back. Everyone would like, like laugh at the time. So yeah, yeah, it was just funny. Like <laughs> so I could good, right? see myself in the <laughs> the TV. So just, <laughs> this is me. Yeah, just being annoying here. Yeah, it's just oh, I love it, bro. Fuck. It's <laughs> honestly every time your head would be there, I would be like, Appy would have his fucking sunnies on in the background. You'd have your sunnies on, <laughs> Men in Black style. Um, what's it like though, winning Dally and Winger of the year? Yeah, if, oh, it was. It was. It was. It's like um. No, it was such a mad achievement, eh? Mm. Like the like just like Origin, like I didn't think that I was gonna get the that end win because I would have thought um Garrick would have got it because mm. like, he was it was a oh he ended up getting well, it. Well, you eh? both you both, both got, got it, it eh? yeah, yeah. But yeah, I would have thought that he just got it in by yep. himself. But, um, 
no, yeah, it was such a mad achievement, eh? Mm. You know, feel feel so proud of myself at the yep. same time, but obviously still got more work to do and stuff like that. Absolutely. So, are you re-signed with the Panthers for how long? I think twenty three is my last year. Okay, so you so you can negotiate with clubs at November first next year. Mm-hmm. Um, <coughs> I, I mean, you know, I'd assume that Panthers is a place you want to be at. You know, one club player, obviously being from the area, but footy is footy. Yeah. Um, when did you re-sign recently? Or uh, I thought it was last year. I re-signed. Last year, yeah, okay. last year I resigned. Sweet. Um, what's it like playing with a guy like Nathan Cleary? Like, you know, one of the best sevens we've seen in a very long time. And you, you obviously, you know, as a winger, you've got to have a good connection with your half, whether it's Romy or Cleary, because yeah. like, there's so many times where they may look up and you know they've got a kick or it just connects really well. Is there? Yeah. What's it like playing with a guy like Cleary? No, nah, Cleary is probably one of those. There's guys that's fully connected with everyone. Mm. Like he makes sure that he's close with everyone in the team. He yep. knows them very well, and um, you know he ex- executes his job to the best of his ability. Yeah, like he's he's always that that guy that's always in the computer room doing the studies of the opposition. Yeah, uh, always the last guy off the field as well. Mm. But um, no, yeah, he leads from the front and. It's it's so weird because I f- I feel like that guy's like forty. He's got the mindset of a forty year old. Yeah, is th- like. One year older than me. Yeah, I think he's 23, 24. So, yeah. Crazy, bro. Oh, yeah, I think he's the real shampoo so <laughs> He's the real what? He's the real shampoo so. <laughs> oh, shampoo so. <laughs> 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 no, nah, yeah, that's a goat, bro. Uh, <laughs> that was so good. Nah, so, so people that listen to the podcast, um, I, I made up a, a, a picture where it was your hair flashing in the New South Wales kit, I think. And um, yeah, we, we created a new shampoo called Shampoo Soap. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's on Instagram where you have to go a million back. Go get it, guys. Yeah. You put, yeah, put it up in the YouTube. <laughs> Bruh, fuck, that's hilarious. Uh, shampoo Soap. <laughs> um, okay, so what's it like for you personally? You've won a premiership, you've played for your state. Uh, what's the plan in the sense of, obviously you want to win a premiership next year, but what's, yeah. the, what's the goal for you personally over the next few years? Uh, just to... For me personally, probably just to stay consistent with obviously my game, but mm. also as you know, years go on, like kind of perfect it and try and take it to a whole new level. Yep. And to um, obviously you know, keep my spot and mm. just to keep inspiring people, you know, just want to inspire those little kids to um, have a dream of, you know, being an NRL player. Because there's so many kids that want to be just like me and, mm. um, you know, just having that role as well, it's just makes me feel so good and just makes yep. me um you know want to be better for not only myself uh, off the field but also on the field as well so yeah. Yeah, absolutely absolutely um now i was speaking to jerome the other day yeah. and he was saying that you boys 70 percent of the playlist is k-pop can you confirm that is the truth or would you say 80 percent oh f- probably 75 percent. 75 percent. it's funny as because because like not many of the boys like listen to k-pop yep. but if it's me and him it's mm. just always us jamming the, the, the k-pop. k-pop songs so <laughs> um yeah there's not many bands that we know it's just whatever song comes up and yep. it's good save 100 so, 100 um, yeah it's just funny whenever we play a k-pop it's just always me and him vibing to it but yep. the, all the boys are like ah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah what, what i was gonna ask you oh are you an anime man anime yeah i yeah. love my um dragon ball z okay That's pretty, yeah Rose is a He's Naruto. Is he Naruto? Or yeah, no, he's a bit of everything. He's, he's a bit really into it. Yeah. Who's more into it? Your Rome. Probably Rome's. Eh? I yeah. love my Dragon Ball Z, but that's yeah. probably my favorite. So Dragon Ball Z is better than Naruto. Yeah, way better, I reckon. Whoa, big yeah. call. Anime fans are gonna come for you, no, bro. No, no, Jace, Jace, Jace. Even, even. <laughs> um, are you gonna watch the new League of Legends Arcane anime on Netflix? I don't know if you've heard of it. Oh, it's a new anime that's getting heaps of raps and praises. League of Legends is a video game. Romy plays it. Yeah, see. Oh, you, do you play? Do you play any video games? Not really. Video games. Yeah, like PS4 and yeah, RPS5 yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking of like streaming, obviously. So yep. um, yeah, I play like Apex. This is a new game called yeah, like Apex, Apex Legends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Apex Legends, so um, yeah, actually, that. you've got you've got a Twitch channel, haven't you? Yeah, but what's I haven't your really tri- started, so You don't want to get started? I haven't started yet. So what's your Twitch channel name? Uh, I think it's Biz Punta. Biz Bunta? Biz, biz underscore Bunta. So. Okay, Biz Bunta. Make sure to subscribe to Biz Bunta on Twitch. Um, favorite movie of all time? Ooh. 
Like, are we talking like when, like now or when I was a kid or all time? I, like, got, like, I love movies. You're on, you're on an island. You can only watch one movie for the rest of your life. What is it going to be? Home Alone. <laughs> Home Alone. That is a classic, an absolute classic, an absolute classic. Yeah. But the kids are psycho. When you actually think about it, like that kid's psychotic, bro. Yeah, he's got some weird. He's got some weird. Like <laughs> to think of the shit that he thinks of to <laughs> fuck those people up. Think about it. He's yeah, a psycho. Two guys, eh? Yeah, they're just poor robbers <laughs> just trying to get. They have probably got no money, and he's rich, killing them. He's actually the bad guy if you ask me. But <laughs> you could give him some. Um, who who's the biggest pest in the side? In the, in probably the... Crit A. He's, oh really? Bro, he's annoying. Wow, that's like, surprising. You know the flyer that's always on the poo, <laughs> just like yeah, just, <laughs> on the poo. Yeah, just just nonstop. Yeah. Nonstop, you reckon? Yeah. Fuck, I, I didn't think on poo. Just <laughs> yeah, he's just on everyone, but it's just annoying. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> He's so oh. annoying, I swear. Uh, <laughs> mate, that's, that's low key. I didn't expect that. Oh, bro, that's he, low key. I'm telling you, he's a pest. Bro. I would have like, thought it's like funny, but oh, man, it's so annoying. Fuck, that's wild, bro. <laughs> I would have thought like Romy, Happy Coruscant. Yeah, they're pests, but bro, no one can reach Critter's pest. Wow, bro, he's he's a whole new level. That's of mad. Pest, yeah. Low key, low key, young pest. Yeah. Um, bro, thank you. Um, thank you. Oh, you actually did you just re-sign uh, sign a deal with Puma? uh yeah 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 congratulations so. what so what does that entail the puma deal in the sense of like uh are you a representative for pre puma do you have to do like photo shoots and that what's it all uh, uh, i think i'll be going down melbourne to yep. do some shoots with them so that's sick yeah they're gonna make a boot for you or what surely yeah hopefully i think i might I'm what, what would you name your boot if you could name a boot business what shampoo shampoo or business <laughs> 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 oh fuck that's okay have you got any hairstyles lined up for us this year because you've had some crap yeah i know um so it was funny so it was either to grow my hair out or cut my ready so that was the reason why i cut my ready so you did cut your ready yeah so I oh cutting. fuck so it was either man. grow my hair out cut my ready or cut my come oh wait or grow my ready out and cut my hair so i ended up cutting my ready and so you've still got you you're growing your hair long though yeah how long do we think we're talking here? We're talking like samurai shit? Like I, I was, so I was telling my missus I want to go skin bold at the top, leave the back, wait till it's like long enough so I can wrap it around my neck. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. I'm down for that shit. You should do that for sure. Holy fuck. Yeah, so that was my first <laughs> idea. And then I was going to get, I was going to go overboards and get a tattoo on my head. But That's overboards. Yeah, <laughs> then, yeah, I would <laughs> Nah, don't be stupid. Yeah, so I was like, oh, I'll grow my hair. So, so are you genuinely thinking about shaving your head and leaving just full fucking mullet at the back or? Yeah, probably. That would be wild, bro. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> fucking wild. And I would love it. I would love it, bro. Mate, um, yeah, thank you so much for coming on the show, bro. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, good luck for 2022. Thanks so much, my brother. Boom. <laughs>